I want to speak a bit about the phone hacking scandal. Um, it's a major scandal that has gripped this country now for several years. Um, and I think it reveals a huge amount about the behaviour of the tabloid press, specifically the Sun and other papers employ, uh, under the banner of News International, now known as News UK. Um, and, it, and it exposes something that's absolutely rotten at the core of this, um, which is corruption. Now, in world rankings, Britain is generally not seen as a very corrupt country, and certainly, I think, compared to other countries, it's not. But that doesn't mean corruption doesn't happen, and this is one of the worst cases of corruption I think I've ever seen in this country. Um... So anyway, uh, there was major developments yesterday. Rebecca Brooks, the former editor of the News of the World and the Sun, um, who's considered the most powerful woman in British media, was cleared uh, by a jury for her role, um, her supposed role in the phone hacking scandal, uh, along with her husband. Now, I have to say uh, I respect the court's decision, but I'm not particularly happy with it. Um... The Sun itself was gloating about this, of course, and they were uh, whinging about how she felt she'd been treated like a terrorist and uh, so on. But, you know, a lot of this really uh, exposes the total hypocrisy that is the tabloid press. Um, I'll get to that in a minute, but there was one other outcome that was uh, Andy Coulson was sentenced, or he was found guilty. He was another News of the World insider, and he was employed for a while as David Cameron's advisor at Downing Street. Um, the Prime Minister yesterday had to come out and make a public apology for hiring Andy Coulson. As Ed Miliband put it, the opposition leader to my international viewers, as he put it, this is the Prime Minister who brought a criminal to the heart of Downing Street. Now, no matter what achievements David Cameron has, his tenure in office is always going to be, uh, this is always going to be a shadow over it his appalling uh, treatment of the phone hacking scandal. I mean, this is the Prime Minister, and I'm going slightly off on a tangent here, but this is the Prime Minister who, along with his government, has defended bank bonuses, defended tabloid editors, um, pretty much been out of public touch on every major issue, and I think it's a disgrace. And that's not a reflection of his whole premiership, I'm not saying everything he's done is bad, but it is a serious issue, and it is something that I think um, will overshadow his premiership. Um, I mean, Cameron had plenty of opportunities to distance himself from Andy Coulson and fire him early on, but he stood by his man and he basically believed a tabloid journalist. Now, the thing about tabloid journalists is they're professional liars, and they're very ruthless uh, and cynical people. You know... <sighs> Rebecca Brooks was apparently known as Ethics Girl in Fleet Street. This, to me, is an oxymoron. I mean, I, I cannot... I think it's just an oxymoron to talk about a tabloid editor as being ethically conscious. These people are ruthless. They don't care who they hurt. They're utterly ruthless. I mean, uh, I think it was at The Independent. Um, Rebecca Brooks and others barged into the Independent uh, offices and demanded that they change the story to suit them. This shows the sort of bullying uh, culture that is at the very heart of tabloid journalism. They're basically just thugs. I mean, I don't even think Rebecca Brooks is the worst. I think there's other Sun editors um, who are even worse than her. They're not as famous as her, but there's others who are just as despicable. The point here is, no matter how many apologies I make, tabloid journalism never changes. It still has a vicious... Um, approach of scapegoating people who can't defend themselves, uh, particularly unemployed people and immigrants. It still um, is utterly tasteless in the way it reports sensitive stories. For example, like I mentioned, the mental health issue. Uh, actually, I don't think I've, I've remade this video, but um, to give you one example, um, some time ago, The Sun had as its headline, Bunkers Bruno. This was referring to the former boxer who had suffered a mental health breakdown. Now that just shows how callous a rag like the sun is. Now Brooks said that she regretted that, but again, would she have regretted it if she never had to face trial? Would she, as an editor, have ever come out and said, sorry, I doubt it. I very much doubt it. Because these people are astonishingly arrogant. 
And one of the things that has angered me most about the hacking scandal is the fact that tabloid editors have hidden behind the press freedom argument. Now let's be clear about press freedom. Press freedom means the right of journalists to do their job, to investigate and scrutinise uh, lawmakers, to report stories, to report the news comprehensively, fairly. That is the job of journalists. Press freedom means allowing the circumstances to give journalists freedom to do their job, i.e. not be subject to censorship or intimidation or things like that. But press freedom does not give journalists a right to do whatever the hell they want. And it does not give journalists, especially tabloid journalists, the right to act like bullies. And that's basically what they are. The United Kingdom um, is a country where freedom of expression, as I made clear in my last video, is very important. But tabloid newspapers don't care who they hurt. They are utterly odious. And I do think there should be, the idea that there should be self-regulation, which some people have suggested, I think is utterly insane. I think that, um, I, by the way, I'm a strong supporter of the Hacked Off campaign because I think they raise a lot of important issues. Um, basically, when tabloid journalists hide behind press freedom, they're basically saying, we can do whatever we want. This has nothing to do with press freedom. This has everything to do with the tabloid press trying to act like gangsters, trying to push people around, and trying to say, uh, we can basically do whatever we want. It's nothing to do with press freedom, and that's something they keep using as an excuse. But, you know, there's so much hypocrisy from them, because for Rebecca Brooks to whinge about privacy invasion, her and her husband to whinge about that, is so ironic, because on a daily basis, they plaster celebrities' private lives all over the front covers. Now, it's true, I I'm not so naive as to think there aren't celebrities out there I know there's celebrities out there who um, who are uh, attention seekers and who will pay tabloids to cover these sort of stories. I know that. So I'm not saying it's entirely the fault of the tabloids, although I hate the tabloids. I do think there are egotistical celebrities out there. But there's other celebrities, other people in the public light who are trying to do their job and get on with it and who do not go to the tabloids to, get, uh, to try and sell their fame. They go to the red carpet They'll do what they have to do as an actor or a singer, but it's not fair to just assume that all celebrities are egotistical maniacs who sort of bribe the tabloids to sell their stories. Some are, but the reality is the tabloid press are experts at invading privacy. I mean, I really don't know what someone's private life has. There's no public interest issue there, none whatsoever. If they've committed a crime, then charge them for it. But something like uh, an affair, which, yes, is a moral shortcoming, it's wrong, but it is still a private matter. And I have to say, we should learn something from the French. When French politicians have an affair, the French, for the most part, see that as a private matter, which it is. And that isn't to justify it, that's not to say it's a good thing. But obviously, cheating and adultery are wrong, but it is not public interest. So the hypocrisy of a rag like the sun and its editor to come out and play the victimhood card is incredible. Because if a politician has an affair, and look at some examples, look at the way David Blunkett was absolutely pilloried over his situation. He was a former Home Secretary. Um, look at the way politicians are crucified if they are anything short of what the tabloid press puts on them. In other words, if they have any human shortcomings, that will be plastered all over the front page and rags like the sun and the Daily Mail will judge them for it. But when the spotlight is turned on tabloid editors, they whinge about it and say, oh, we're journalists, we can do what we want. This is just, to me, it's just utterly odious hypocrisy. I mean, I, I just think that's the t uh, uh, characteristic of a typical bully you can give but you can't take and that is basically what tabloids are, tabloid editors are they're bullies I think they're despicable people and I absolutely hate what the tabloids do in this country I think that this is only part of the it's good that Colson is being sentenced but I think that you know he's only one man this goes much deeper this does expose corruption because it shows how, s how close Scotland Yard was to News International that was an abomination. Um, and I think it also shows the political connections 
to News International and how for far too long too many politicians, not just Tories, from Labour as well, have been far too close to this evil organisation. And if you think evil is a strong term, consider the number of lives they have ruined. Um, I mean, the tabloids have actually provoked riots before because they've tried to stir up uh, stories about sensitive criminal cases such as especially issues like child abuse, paedophiles and so on. Now, it is their duty to report those things, but they have to report them in a responsible way. And when you have tabloid headlines saying, Nance is caught living in a certain place, that's incredibly irresponsible, because every fix on reader will then go out and try to lynch the so-called nonce. That's a problem, because innocent people get targeted. So I hate the way the tabloids are so irresponsible in the way they report things. They, uh, in the case of the Daily Mail, the paper likes to play judge, jury and executioner, the most, possibly the most obnoxious paper in Britain, um, the most arrogant, definitely the most arrogant paper in Britain. The Sun is in some ways uh, the ugliest, but the Daily Mail is possibly the most arrogant. Either way, they're both tabloid trash, but um, I think we need to learn some things from this. Number one, there's public responsibility. If you feel outraged about what the, these tabloids have done, if you feel outraged about the fact they've hacked into hundreds of citizens' private uh, details, then don't buy them. Just find your conscience and don't buy these rags. Because they legitimise themselves by saying, oh look, the public keeps buying it. Um, I think every aspiring politician also needs to be very careful about how close they are to, to uh, powerful newspapers. Now, supposedly, we this is not the People's Republic of China. In other words, you don't have a political party controlling the press. Arguably, it's the other extreme in this country where the press control politicians. Um, I actually believe, and this will be a controversial statement, but I sometimes think the press in Britain have far too much power, um, especially the tabloid press. And the culture of impunity, the culture of arrogance that has emerged from this phone hacking just demonstrates that because they were acting under the context that they felt they could do whatever they wanted and probably for a while they could um, so I think we need to learn things from this um, Ed Miliband was recently photographed holding a copy of the sun that backfired badly and he ended up having to apologize um, that was a very bad move because he should realize that in light of phone hacking in light of just how low this sort of paper is in terms of its criminality, that was a bad judgment. Um, the son was furious when he, he then apologised to his supporters, but of course they're going to be furious, because they like to push politicians around, or at least try to. Um, now Ed Miliband said he was only supporting the England scene, but he could have chosen any other paper to do that. Why, why the son? It's difficult because for a long time there was a situation whereby any politician brave enough to speak out against the Murdoch press would find themselves slandered the next day. And that was a disgrace. Um, and I do have a lot of respect for those MPs who did speak out, people like Tom Watson. They're true parliamentarians. They're um, decent people who recognise just how corrupt this organisation is. Basically, News Corps and its uh, successor... News UK has far too much power in this country. It has been weakened probably by phone hacking, but the way things are, I honestly believe that if David Cameron was serious about this, he would make Rupert Murdoch a persona non grata in the United Kingdom. Murdoch's grovelling apologies are meaningless. This is a man who uh, is basically a media tycoon in the tabloid press. If you think someone like that is sincere, then... I am convinced they are only sorry because they got caught. I just don't think that... I'm not saying that I in all the reports, but the culture of dishonesty, the culture of cynical character attacks, it's just... it's sickening, quite frankly. Um, and it does trouble me that they do have such a big readership. Anyway, there's not much more to say, but I, I just hope that Rebecca Brooks has learned to swallow some humble pie from all of this. I respect the decision of the court, but maybe now she knows what it feels like. 
to have your life scrutinised on a daily basis. And not because they're scrutinising the powerful, but because they're scrutinising private lives of of things that have absolutely no public interest whatsoever. You know, if the sun was coming out and talking about major political issues um, that, for example, were really impacting people, that I could understand. But most of their stories either lead on celebrities' private lives or try to scapegoat people who can't defend themselves, such as welfare claimants. Now, whatever your views are on that, you cannot compare a powerful, extremely powerful, tabloid organisation to people who are struggling to get by and who have no power to deal with that. So it's really not an equilibrium. Um, I mean, I honestly just see the tabloid press as being a bunch of gangsters who push people around to get their own way. And I'm not going to say I want them to be banned. I, I can't say that. But I would like, personally, I wouldn't shed a tear if every single tabloid in this country had the same fate as the news of the world. I wouldn't shed a tear. In fact, I'd open, I'd honestly open a champagne bottle because I hate them and I hate what they do. Am I saying every story they report is wrong? Am I saying, you know, if they come out with something like a uh, young thug mugs an old lady, who's going to disagree with that? But I still think the way they report things is massively irresponsible. And they're not going to change. The apologies are meaningless because the tabloid culture hasn't changed. There may well be a few uh, things that have uh, changed in terms of the way they can report things. But the changes are quite minor. If you look at the, a tabloid cover from 2014 and a tabloid cover from 2010, there's really not much difference. That proves tabloid culture really hasn't moderated that much. And whatever they do, they'll only do it because they have to. By the way, the idea of self-regulation, I think, is insane. That's a bit like asking the, the fox to guard the chickens. I mean, if the police uh, are subjected to an independent police complaints commission, so should the press. The press cannot be trusted to monitor themselves. Maybe more responsible papers, but the press as a whole, no. I don't believe they can be trusted to monitor themselves. So it's necessary to have an independent um, body that oversees this. Not a body made up of politicians, that would obviously be a problem for democracy, but a body that is independent from the press. Um, so I hope the Leveson recommendations, at least in that regard, are put, brought forward. Political parties have opposed that, because for too long political parties have been relying on rags like the sun to win general elections, and I hate that fact. I hate it. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there.